Well, morning folks. We're heading out on a bit of a ride. Got a bit of a group together here, and we're going to be trying the KTM Super Adventure S. What else have we got here? We've got the new R1250 GS, but that's a bit unfair. That's a GSA and it's been run in at the moment. It's not had its first service. We've got a K1300. We've got last year's RR. We've got R1. We've got KTM GT over there. Speed Triple RS. There's all sorts of different bikes here. So we're going to have a bit of a, a blat around the south of England. And we'll see how it goes. It'll be interesting to see how this fares. Let's hit the road. If the neighbours weren't awake before, they definitely are now. You might remember Pete's S1000RR there from when we went to Hilltop. Now there's a, a lot of contention in the industry at the moment around um, Hilltop. But I don't believe any of it. I'm perfectly happy with what Jeff and the boys did with my bike. So um, I still go by them. But that's for you to make your own mind up about. Nice GT. I've got the GT coming after this goes back actually. Next month. Looking forward to that. Bit of faffage going on. So we've all just filled up. Bring me neatly onto the fuel range of the KTM Super Adventure S. Well this is a full tank on it and it's saying I've got 220 miles. Now I've been riding this for a good couple of weeks now on my normal general commute and I know I had it, well, below zero. It was flashing red and then went empty but the engine was still running and I had 180 miles but I think I was on vapour. That was about 181 miles I'd done. So it's round about the same as the GS, to be honest. Uh, the standard GS, not GS Adventure, obviously. The GS is 23 litres, this is... So we're doing the drop-off marker system. If you never used that before, that's whereby you have a tail end Charlie who stays constant and you have a leader who stays constant and obviously the number two in the column of bikes here would be sat behind the leader as soon as you come to a point where you turn off the main road so roundabouts, junctions, anything like that the number two will stop and mark that point and you do not move, as number two you do not leave that position until the tail end Charlie passes you then you know the last man, last person, whatever you want to call it. Then you know the last person in the group has gone by you. You then rejoin the group as the final but one. You obviously, you overtake the tail end, Charlie, because they always stay the same. And you join the back of the sort of following group. And you just keep doing that. So you're constantly sort of cycling your way through the group. It's called the drop-off marker system. Very successful. It's used by, I would say, the vast majority of big organised tours and group rides out there. It's good, but it relies on that number two person marking the junction. But it does mean that if you have a big disparity in the sort of speed or uh, skill level within your group, you know, you're always going to get some people who are faster than others, some people want to go fast, some people are happy trundling along, but the drop-off just allows everybody within that group to get the ride and um, you, know, you all get there. Good little system. Oh, out on the Nationals! Had some real heavy rain this morning. Whose idea was this then? Biblical. As I was riding up here, we're out sort of uh, riding Oxfordshire way. Some of the boys didn't want to go out and ride in the torrential rain, which sort of makes sense, I suppose. So we sat and drank tea and coffee and had a bacon roll as we waited for the weather to pass. And pass it has, thankfully. So there you go, you see the marker system working? One of the boys waiting there. Yeah, so they'll wait for the back marker to come by, and then he just rejoins the group. And the system works. Look at the size of that dog. So I've had the 2018-2019 KTM 1290 Super Adventure S. I've had this for just over two weeks. Two weeks yesterday, actually. Been riding it every single day. Helga, my GS, she has been living with KTM whilst I had their bike so this is the only bike I've ridden apart from on my, my job course I've been riding this every day how have I found it then? well it has been everything I was told KTM's would be except the unreliable part 
because it's been, touch wood, totally reliable, no issues whatsoever. Uh, the power is insane, I love it. It's got something like 140, 150 brake, I think, this. And it's got almost the same torque. It, it is crazy. For a big adventure bike, it's a whole load of fun. However, that comes at a price because the high speed stability isn't there for me. It's nowhere near as planted as perhaps the GS or the Triumphs are. I've not tried the multi track with it. I've not tried the multi so I don't know. But certainly at high speed, speed you shouldn't be doing, I'll hasten to add, so on closed roads, on circuits, that sort of stuff, you start to get a little bit of stability issue through the front, through the bars, she starts doing that. And on one occasion, I had a full on tank slapper. It was horrendous. I thought it was the end of me, to be honest with you. Coming off of a bend into a big tight sweeping left-hander, I gave it loads of beans and uh, it just went into a almost side-to-side -side bar end to bar end full-on tank slapper but it very quickly sorted itself out and I came through it and out of that but that shook me up so uh, don't know what caused that, no idea I didn't feel like there was any major bump in the road or anything like that and I have had the generic wobble a lot of people contacted me to ask if I had that the answer is yes, I have. So top end stability, not very keen on. The dive you get from the front being conventional forks, you know, it's just because I've been spoiled with the BMWs, but uh, I'm definitely a fan of Taylor Lever compared to conventional forks. Uh, the low end speed, when I've been commuting through town, first, second gear, I found I'm having to feather the clutch quite a lot for anything below sort of 20 mile an hour. There's quite a, a juddering sensation through the fueling. So it definitely feels like this is a bike that needs to be under power. You know, you need to be moving at a reasonable speed, i.e. more than 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, or under acceleration. Then the fueling's beautiful, it's lovely. Uh, the blipper and quick shifter for a big adventure bike is beautiful. It feels lovely and silky smooth compared to the likes of the GS for sure. Brakes, again, they are ample. They have hauled me to a stop adequately. Uh, it's just that dive you get in the front forks, a little bit off putting. Comfort wise, about an hour and a half, I am starting to feel it, to be honest, on this thing. With the likes of the GS, I can ride that to Land's End from south of England. I'll get to Land's End, I'll have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, some bite to eat and then I'm more than happy to jump on the bike and ride back down to London again. On this, I will be looking for my GS by the time I got up there. I don't know why, I just find it a more tiring bike to ride, this. Very nimble, feels like you can flick it around no problem at all. The semi-automatic suspension you have on this, I've got it set in sport mode. Uh, it gives you a lovely ride, very, very nice ride. I've got this set just to a rider. You can set it rider, rider with luggage, rider and pillion, rider pillion and luggage. Again, very much like the older GS's were. So you can just set it up exactly how you like. And the ride itself feels lovely. in it's actually an enjoyable bike to ride it's a fun bike to ride like I was saying after a long time in the saddle you know hour and a half two hours I'm glad to get off it but it makes me smile when I get back on it if you know what I mean the GS I, I can just ride that and ride it and ride it and I love it I really do enjoy it but the GS sometimes doesn't tickle your danglies I've, used, I've said that before use that as an expression it doesn't light the fire sometimes the 1200 doesn't what I've had of the 1250 absolutely does and I want to take out the standard GS 1250 I want to take that out for a bit longer and just see what that's like because obviously I've had a good shot at the 1250 GS Adventure and I've got that round the UK ride coming up again soon hopefully this one won't 
will break down. I want that fault, a faulty battery on this one. But uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. I do enjoy it. I've been told the KTM Super Duke GT, which I've got in August, I've been told that excels at where this doesn't. So the high speed stability, the comfort, everything like that. So I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go. England is just becoming full of 30s, 40s and 50s everywhere. I understand the safe limp implications, I really do, and I'm not advocating speeding, I'm not. But my god, there will be lots of different viewpoints on that matter, and I appreciate that. So we'll draw a discreet veil on that one. We live in a beautiful country, we really do. There's so many parts of the UK that I'll guarantee you, probably the vast majority of you watching this right now, you won't have gone in and explored the UK, or even your own country, whether that's England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. Hang on. Granted, quite a few of you will, probably extensively. And good on you, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. But there are some stunningly beautiful places right here on our own backyard. Gorgeous little villages. Honestly folks, get on your bikes, get out there and just explore, just hit the road, go and have a look, there's some stunning places out there, some beautiful little B roads as well, these little scratching roads here, out in the country, they're great, there's very little traffic, surface is okay, you don't need to ride like a hooligan to enjoy them, you can ride within the national speed limit, hey, look, we're doing 40, what, 45 miles an hour here, and on some of those roads, you wouldn't go, some of those corners, you wouldn't go any quicker. They're the ones, get out there and have some fun. This thing, it's just soaking it all up, it's lovely. Ooh, could do with a bit of splosh. A little cup of coffee, I think, soon. Right, we're onto some good roads, finally. So this is a bit unfair, we've got the GS Adventure in front, but that hasn't even had its first service yet, so you can't spank that in any shape or form. So I'd imagine we'll be able to dispatch that fairly quickly in the Nationals, just with sheer power. The other ones in front of that though, ooh, R1, Speed Triple RS, a couple of Ducatis actually. A 959 Ducati, very nice. Just had to let back through on his GSA because I mugged him off <laughs> on a stretch of the nationals. But I'll tell you what, considering that thing, that GSA is being run in, my god, general riding, you're, you're still not going to beat it on this. Top end, yeah, this will this will beat it. It's good to see, you know, the 30s, 40s be being adhered to, which is which is good. I'm a big advocate of that through the little villages, absolutely. another little twist of the wrist there's just another wolf 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 the power that comes in where I'd generally be expecting the, the likes of the GS to have topped out really in that gear and it's time to go up this thing has just got more pull my bum is getting sore now hour and a half marker. Apparently you can get a comfort seat for this. I'll definitely advise it. Beautiful. Just effortless. The suspension doesn't adapt the way the likes of the, again, sorry, the GS does. Obviously, the GS, if we were on roads like this, the GS will stiffen right up depending on how you set it. Within the, the sort of marker of how you set it up. If you like a firm ride, then it will firm right up. But obviously, if you like a, a really soft ride, it will be firm in the soft levels. 
but then when you hit the really bumpy stuff like we had back there if you're in the farm setting it will ease off a little bit uh, it's just an intelligent system this if you have it set at farm it stays firm well it certainly seems to feel that way because it was too firm really as it's coming over the the bumps there to the extent of uh, when you need to brake the bike starts to feel just a little, just a little bit unstable because it's so firm and it's bouncing around a lot but not drastic nothing drastic the bar is set massively high with the likes of that thing there and time for some splosh Tea time! Night time! Tea time! Night time! Tea time! Bit of splash there at the Duke of Marlborough. We're up all Oxfordshire. It's Oxford, Oxfordshire, somewhere. I think. Certainly up that neck of the woods, anyway. We're now hopefully going to do some more twisties and head back for a barbecue and a cerveza or two. Some beautiful bikes here. That 959 Ducati is gorgeous, isn't it? I love the look of that. Hypermotard, I want. Yeah. GT over there. K1300, S1000RR, R1250 GSA Oh, F800 GT, that oh, wasn't the, the old Suzuki Street Triple RS as well, beautiful Oh, and the old Fireblade as well We got them all Right, I want to get up behind the GT Have a little look as to what we're going to be playing with soon On the road again. Ooh, speaking of singing, I'm sorry, Richie. I'm sorry because you in no way sound as bad as I do. Folks, Richie Vida, he's got the Wild Bad Weekender coming up next weekend, and I am going to be there. Now, I don't know if you've seen this video by the time it happens. If you do, I'll see you there. This is a lovely route, beautiful. I'm sure I've been down here on my bike course. And into another 30. Where are we? Where are we? Clifton, wherever that is, we're here. Now, power wise, you've got absolutely nothing to worry about on this. Oodles of power, loads of it. Just those issues of saying that speed in the front end it just doesn't give me the confidence to chuck it in like you can with some of the other ones. And anytime there is a sort of natural breakaway because of overtakes and things, this thing can reel them in no problem at all. Bloody hell. The brakes, they were terrible. Did you see them there? ABS and everything kicking in. If you have to brake hard from speed, this thing seems to tie itself up in knots. So I think we are nearly back to base. So what are my final thoughts then on this, the 2018-2019 KTM Super Adventure S. Here we go. Power, amazing. Insane. Everything you are told KTM is, it is. Loads of fun. A proper hooligan. You can tear up any road. 
and you can compete with the best of them on this machine. However, stability issues at high speed in the front means it's not the most confidence inspiring going into a bend. Fueling at lower speed, your sort of 20s and 30s, isn't great. It's searching all the time for fuel, it needs to be under power. Comfort wise, again, the seat too hard. There is a power parts option with KTM for the comfort seat. Go for that. That is far more comfortable and it solves a lot of discomfort in the rear. Power wise, this thing's got way more torque, so it's quicker off the mark. And it's got a fairly hefty top end on this. I've been told you'll be looking at a 155s miles per hour. Whereas the GS 139, I've had that on the Autobahn. Autobahn. Now obviously it has a chain, it's not shaft drive. <laughs> I know, such things exist. Now when it comes time to lubing the chain, the swing arm sort of obstructs the bottom of the chain. So it's really hard to, um, to lube up. So that's a little bit of an issue. I'm assuming it's maybe to try and give it as much protection as possible off-road. I don't know. But it was it was pretty hard. You can't really do the traditional way of, of, of lubing the inside of the chain. I had to go to the outside and just spin the wheel. So would I have the KTM Super Adventure S over a BMW R1200 or R1250 GS? And I'm afraid for me, no, I wouldn't. The GS is more user-friendly throughout the entire rev range. It's more comfortable, more practical. In fact, the only thing this beats the GS on is the hooligan aspect, and the 1250 has that in abundance. For me, it would be the 1250 all day. You can pick one of these up. KTM are doing amazing deals at the moment. I think you can get £1,290 off of the RRP and I think they said they were doing them for as little as 12 and a half grand, 13 grand. So yeah, value for money compared to sort of 18, 18 and a half grand for the GS, that may well sway you. And here we are folks, done and dusted. So, what are we thinking? So there she is, one last time. Stonking bike. Well worth a go. If you're in the market for a big adventure bike, definitely give one a shot and see what you think. Let me know if you agree with what I've said or not. All right then, folks, that'll do us for this week. Thank you very much for all your support as ever, all you Patreons. The meetup is happening. All the details will be on the Patreon page. All you subscribers, thank you very much for all your support. Everyone that's been coming along and joining up, stopping me, saying hello in the street. That is awesome. Thank you. Right, folks, look after yourselves. Remember... Get on out there and live your life.